Hey everyone, it is Allison here, and I'm excited to be posting on the Scrap Happy blog. Um, this month we have the unexpected inspiration challenge of wedding cakes and how they inspire and um, direct our designs. So when I think of wedding cakes, um, I think of tears, yes, but um, for me it's like the icing. And my husband and I, when we got married, um, the one thing that we insisted on having on our wedding cake was buttercream icing. Uh, he's not a fan of fondant. I kind of, I don't mind the way it looks. I don't like the way it tastes. So I was, I was perfectly happy to go with the buttercream. Um, and so I was like, how can I uh, recreate that on a layout? And my initial go-to is pastes. So I went through my stash and I have this hero paste um, just in white. Um, and I thought, okay, that's a good start. How can I create some interest and some texture with that? And as you can see, I kind of got a little bit excited and I started working, but um, let me backtrack and show you my, what my inspiration is for this. So I Googled some images. These are the four that really spoke to me. And um, I, I like this sort of naked cake idea. I thought that I could maybe try and recreate that with paste a little bit. And then I saw this one and I really like how they've created this ombre effect in the icing. And I thought I could easily do that by adding some color into my white paste. Um, and then um, I liked, I love this gold drippy effect. So I have something that I'm hoping will um, recreate that but I'm going to do it with a bit of a twist. Um, but first I need to create this um, ombre paste sort of underneath layer and let it all dry and then I can work on the rest of it. So what I have started is I put a little bit of um, watercolor paint. So this is like not a cake style, so it's kind of like a liquid. And I mixed it in with my white paste. Now I haven't mixed it all the way together because I want to create that ombre. So I left some white paste so that I can keep adding in the white to um, make it lighter as it goes up, up the page. So I've just literally, I keep adding white into this section where I've added the blue. And then I can go back to my page and just swipe it on. And I'm not looking for perfection. In fact, um, the more texture, the better. And I'm gonna add in some more white to lighten it up a little bit more. And I have, you probably can't see this, let me pull it up. There are little pencil marks. That's the size of my photo. And yes, I'm gonna cover it up. And that that's, doesn't matter because I, I just needed to know how big I needed to make this uh, section. Okay, so now I'm gonna have some mostly white at the top. And then the reason that I have chosen blue is because I am going to be scrapbooking a photo of my daughter who just graduated from high school and her dress is blue. I think I am good with that and I have a lot of paste left over and I can play with that. But this is the photo that I'm going to be scrapbooking. So I just wanted to highlight the blue not match it exactly um, and my area is bigger because I will add some layers behind this um, I'm a layery kind of gal okay um, before I play with my the rest of my paste I wanted to show you the piece that my practice piece so this is my practice piece and you can see I've added the gold drips to it um, this one is Brutus Monroe's Aqua Pigment in Gilded. 
and I quite like that but I didn't have a lot of control over where the drips were going. So then I pulled out my Hero Arts pearls in gold and it it dries um well, it's not dry yet <laughs> um it dries harder like a like an enamel dot but it's quite liquid to start with um so that's what created these strips so this is what i will be using on um, this other page um but i'm gonna do it in a different way and we'll get to that when we get there um, I am back. Everything is dry. Um, this is what the Hero Paste that I added the watercolor paint to looks like now that it's all dry. Um, I am loving the texture that I got in it. It really puts me in mind of cake icing and I really feel like um, I, I captured the inspiration image. Not purple obviously it's blue okay so now I want to bring in the gold drips um, just to remind you this was my practice one um, this was the gilded aqua pigment um, from Brutus Monroe and this was the hero arts gold uh, pearls um, and I'm gonna go with this now my inspiration cake image has the gold on top dripping down with flowers above. However, I kind of want to turn it on its head a bit because you can find my picture under all this stuff. Once I have my picture there, if I start dripping gold from the top and have the flowers up there, I just feel like that's not the best placement for for everything. I think it would be fun to have the gold dripping up, <laughs> so to speak, and then have flowers and whatnot, which I still have yet to pull from my stash, um, but have whatever other embellishments I want down here. So sort of flip the cake upside down, but keep the ombre colors um, going from dark to light, dark at the bottom, light at the top. So this is also going to need to dry. Um, but I am gonna, I'm just gonna go for it and hope this works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on a lot of these and you're probably gonna be like, oh my gosh, you're wasting so much. But I'll be honest, these are not my favorite product to work with. Uh, I've tried it like with card making and things. And I find the fact that it is so liquid um, kind of a disadvantage. I'm gonna make a couple of sort of bigger splotches. Now, it's very thick. Let's see if it runs. It's gonna take its time. Because it's so thick, it's thicker than the aqua pigment, it's gonna take its time to run, which I am perfectly okay with. I'm gonna see if I can get it to run there. directed running. Okay, now I'm gonna tap it a bit on my work surface to make it run a little bit faster because I don't want it to dry before it's reached the, where I want it to reach. And I don't even know where I want it to reach, I'll be honest. This one is coming quite a bit up the ways. I'm okay with that actually. Um, I'm a layery kind of gal, so I imagine that uh, my photo is going to have quite a few paper layers behind it. Um, I wanted to get this part of the layout done before I tackled uh, any of the paper layers. Um, so that, that is cool. And this is what it's going to look like. Yeah? Cool, right? Okay. So I'm going to let this one dry. I'm going to let this dry overnight um, and then I will come back and we will continue working on this tomorrow. So this video was reaching epic length proportions. So to try and cut down on that, I decided to speed up the rest of this video where I'm just faffing about, honestly, um, and do a voiceover. So my next step was to go into my scrap bin and pull out some papers that I could use to map my photos as well as die cut into flowers because I want to have a whole lot of flowers um, underneath the photo 
and kind of up the sides sort of um, mimicking what you would see on the top of a cake but on, on the bottom of this layout. Uh, so I'm just showing you the papers that I pulled out. Now, wedding cakes also make me think of uh, doilies. So my next step was to go into my doily bin and see what I had there. Um, I had uh, this large, kind of crumpled, uh, white one, um, more white ones, some gold and silver ones, and um, I found some paper flowers as well as crocheted flowers. So I pulled all of that out. Um, there's no way it's all gonna go onto my layout, but I like options. And I have a lot of options of enamel dots as well as some gold die cuts from a Maggie Holmes collection. Um, and then I went through my dies to see what sort of flower dies I had. And turns out I don't have a ton of really decent flower dies, so I guess I need to go shopping, but these are the ones that I chose and that um, I eventually used to die cut just a whole whack load of flowers. You can see them at the top there. Um, so I did have an idea for these paper flowers and I had some leftover watercolor paint in my palette and I wondered what they would look like painted. Um, I don't actually end up using it on the layout, but um, I, I do have some other projects that I'm working on, so stay tuned. Um, but you'll just, you just see some of that watercolor paint in my palette there, and I'm adding water from my water brush, and then just brushing it on. Nothing fancy. These paper flowers have kind of like a coffee filter um, texture, and the paper is kind of like coffee filter paper. Uh, so they were really, really flimsy when they were wet, but um, now that it's dry, it's much sturdier. So I painted that, put it aside to dry, and then I started distressing my um, background. I just wanted to take a little bit off the top and the left-hand side because I was happy with the margins on the bottom and the right. Um, so once I have trimmed a little bit off, I'm going to take my scissors and distress the edges. Um, I don't have a fancy distresser, so this is how I generally do it. Now this paper is really, really thick, so I'm not getting the sort of level of distressing that I was, um, that I'm used to. Um, I have one little rip down on the lower left there, so I add one onto the top right. And then my next step is to find a background paper to back this with. Um, and I go immediately to Chamel's collections because she tends to do really nice navy papers. So I've pulled out three that I am going to audition on this layout. Uh, the first one being that specialty paper, which I think is from Little by Little. Uh, but I liked the way the gold um, really brought out that gold on the front. The other two papers are from Main Character Energy and they don't end up working. Uh, the blues are not right and then all of those colorful shapes on the one is, is just not, it's just not the right feel. So um, now I'm going to tape down this background with um, a whole whack load of double sided tape because it is very, very warped. Um, and you will see in a minute I make a giant mess. Um, but my normal process for taping down um, like if I'm if I want to, if I want to have a frame of a background paper, my normal process is to just take the release paper off one side, line up the other three, and then uh, I can glue down that one side, and then the rest of them um, should be easy to glue down. However, something must have shifted when I was putting this one down because it was just not straight. So I had to rip it off and try again, and second time's a charm. But um, there is a ton of texture on this paper, so it never really flattens. Um, it will flatten a bit more once it's in my album, but it is always going to have quite a bit of warp. Um, and you'll see I can't even get a straight photograph of it. So now I'm going to build my photo mats, and I want my photo to be um, matted in a, in a formal way, which means nothing is um, crooked. So everything's at nice right angles and um, I have nice symmetrical mats. Um, I do want a little bit more um, informality, I suppose, uh, around it. So um, I end up ripping some of the papers 
but the photo itself, I want to have it nice and formal and double matted um, because it's a formal event. So to rip this paper, because I want to rip it right near the edge, um, I actually score it first and that just helps me um, manage to rip it so close to the edge. And now I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm pulling in the doily. I've got that daisy paper. Um, I'm going to pull in some of the gold polka dot vellum in a minute. Uh, it's just, it's just a matter of me playing. And this is why the video was taking so long because I end up playing a lot um, in this process. Uh, it just, it took me a long time. Um, I have cut out that journaling card and I initially have it there where it's um, all the way to the left. Um, but as I keep playing and I try this other doily, but I'm not super happy with the um, more sort of modern look to the doily. I really like how lacy um, this one is, but it was too big. So I chop it up and just put it in a couple of spots. So... Um, in moving that journaling card around, I decide that I actually really like it on top of all of those other layers. So I have to get my journaling done first because there's just too much texture on this layout to be able to write on it effectively. So once that's done, I can get everything stuck down and then it is time to start adding in all of my flowers. And I have a lot of flowers. Um, but as I am adding all these flowers, I realize that some of them I just don't like. I don't like the shape and the, the papers that I've chosen. Uh, it's like the daisy ones, I guess, the, the spellbinders ones that I don't like. Um, so quite a lot of the flowers that I spent quite a lot of time die cutting don't get put on this layout. But um, all of the flowers that I fussy cut do end up on this layout and I, they make me quite happy, actually. I really like the pops of color that they give. Um, so here I am just moving things around and I spend a lot of time doing this, uh, trying to figure out the best placement for all of these, uh, like sort of branches and, um, all the little flowers and, uh, I eventually cut some of them down. Um, but yeah, it takes me quite a bit of time, uh, which is why I am sparing you guys all that, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Um, adhesive on this layout. So I have used double-sided tape. I like my um, sukwang, my score tape, whatever you want to call it. And um, I've used liquid adhesive. Um, my Nouveau Deluxe is what works for me. Those work for me here in my climate. They, nothing moves um, later on. Um, and that makes me very happy. This layout, because there's so much texture, I do end up using probably more glue than I would normally use, especially the wet glue. The, uh, normally I would be putting down sort of larger items with double-sided tape, but um, I use more wet glue. So there I was trying to audition that blue flower, but it's just not working. I think if I had painted the smaller ones, they would have worked on this layout, but uh, the big one is just not, it's too big. And I've got most of my flare, my flares, my flowers in. Uh, so now it's time to get a title in. And these glittery foam thickers have been in my stash for quite a while. They are Heidi Swap. I have no idea which collection they're from or how long they've been in my stash. But um, the color works perfectly with her dress. So they had to go. Um, and I have come up with a super original title. I know. Just, just firing on all cylinders right there. So title in, flowers on, it is time for uh, some gold. And this is where I pull out those die cuts from the Maggie Holmes kit or packet. Um, the flowers themselves are too big, but the little golden sort of branches, I guess, um, they work. And I like how they just help bring that gold from the back, which I've which I've ended up covering up a lot of. Um, just bring it up and, and up to the front, which I really like. So yeah, I'm just getting those in place. And um, adding some last finishing touches. Well, I say that, but there's actually quite a bit left to go. <laughs> I 
had a hard time knowing when to quit. Um, I had die cut so many flowers and I, I sort of felt like I wanted to get them all on there. Um, but it did reach a point where it was just like, no, I need to stop. Um, so now I am down to the teeny tiny flowers and I'm using these a little bit like confetti or enamel dots and I'm sprinkling them around. Um, they, they worked really well like this actually. And then, uh, as you'll see in close-ups later, I use some of them as spots to put the gold enamel dots that I add on in a little bit. Um, but this is kind of a fun, a fun way to um, add that confetti element to your layout. Uh, I know that the mini puffy stickers are really popular, and uh, if this were a more casual layout, I probably would have pulled in some of the mini puffy florals from main character energy I think it is but um, I, I wanted the gold instead um, and uh, this didn't this didn't really feel like a puffy sticker kind of layout so I'm adding some gold enamel dots and um, I'm looking around to see what other uh, flowers I still have uh, on my desk that I can add um, there's a couple of fussy cut ones that I just decide need to make it onto the layout because darn it I spent so much time fussy cutting them it's time for it to get on um, and this one ends up at the top right by the tear and um, I think it works really great up there it kind of brings attention to that tear um, I in fact tear it even more uh, once I get this guy stuck down And that just helps um, helps bring attention to the distressing, which I think is kind of important. All right, so some gold enamel dots up there, and it got stuck to my finger. <laughs> and we're all done. So thank you for joining me, and I will see you again soon. Bye.